in the West we have many places that are business incubators. It's a place where someone can take a business idea and they will provide advice in terms of business. So an incubator receives hands-on support from the incubator company without an attached time frame. But we also visited a very interesting place called Hacks, which is a hardware accelerator. An accelerator is extremely structured usually. It's structured in terms of how much equity they take, whether it's 8% or 10%. It's structured in terms of the duration of the accelerator. Usually you'd be looking at three months. And at the end of an accelerator program, there usually is a demo day where they bring together investors for the accelerator cohort to pitch to them. So an incubator is free form, it's, uh, it's open, whereas an accelerator is highly structured. Both have pros and cons. An accelerator is a place where for for uh, makers and hackers when they seriously want to go to market. In a regular maker space, it's more about learning, enjoying yourself, sharing your skills, and without any specific commercial outcome, which is great because there's no there's no pressure that way to make every every hour you spend in a regular hacker space be meaningful to some commercial outcome. It's more about free will learning. But when you go to an accelerator, that's when, you, that's when you're getting serious about going to market and you're working with other people who are serious about that as well. Taking people's ideas and supporting them with venture capital, design services, marketing services, sales services, whatever whatever you're lacking in your organisation, these guys can fill the holes and bring your product to market. These pathways are going to become more valuable and again accelerators have their place. Accelerators are a great way for companies to access a network of investors without really focusing all your time on the investors. You can focus your time on building your product and allowing these other people to help create those connections. Having your own person on the ground and seeing the community they've built around hacks lets you innovate so much more efficiently. Yeah, if I was bringing a product to market, I would either be on the ground or have someone on the ground in Shenzhen. So in the world, there's uh, quite quite a few accelerators. So there's Bolt and uh, Hardware One in the US. In uh, Shenzhen, one of the better known ones is Hacks. Which focuses specifically on hardware products. We met Duncan from Hacks, who I'd also met when he came to Australia earlier in the year, so it was great to reconnect with him. Hi, I'm Duncan. I'm Managing Director at Hacks Accelerator here in Shenzhen. Uh, my name is Benjamin Joff. I'm General Partner of Hacks. I'm the mechatronics lead at Hacks, so essentially what I do is I help all the teams as they come through the program with electronics, mechanics and software problems and generate the integration of them together. It's similar to a business incubator, but it really focuses on the technical aspects and the business relationship with suppliers not necessarily just have you structured your company the correct way and you know, all of those sorts of things that a, um, a business incubator would normally take care of. The first thing is that we obviously provide a soft landing into Shenzhen. Shenzhen as an ecosystem is brilliant for both development and then also moving on to manufacturing. It's not just building the business, it's also building the product that the business is based on. The one thing that we do definitely always stick with is hardware. All the teams that come through at least have some sort of hardware component and that's what we're helping with them with. In that space we do branch out quite a lot into like medical applications, like business to business, industrial applications. Applications. We also go into just consumer products and things like that. So we're quite broad in terms of hardware, but very specific in that we only do hardware. Hex has been going for a while. It's got a. It's helped many many organisations, many startups. When we first went there on the wall, there must have been a few hundred or more plaques of all the organisations. So we sat there, sort of pointing them out, going, oh, "Yes, that's a that's, a, that's a, a Melbourne one." So the whole idea is that we find startup companies that have recently sort of gone to the stage of producing a physical prototype of some sort. We bring them to Shenzhen to make sure that they can begin developing their prototypes to a point that they can then either start moving into production or they can move into sort of pre-sales platforms, or in some cases, just have some sort of demonstration device like a more complex technology they can present to investors, sort of like more people to start keeping their company train going. Because what Hacks really is a foundation is a platform for product creators, designers, scientists, whoever they might be, bring something to life. When we visited Hacks, we were told that we weren't allowed to film anything inside. That's because everybody there was working on early stage products. They are things that haven't come to market yet and they don't want to be gazumped by someone else seeing what they're working on. We weren't allowed to photograph or really talk much about this because so you can see there's, oh, that, there's that startup and you know, that's what they're doing and there's, there's another one and I guess it's that ability for them to interact with each other and I guess share knowledge about what factories are using, what techniques and what, what's working well. So it was very interesting to see this protected environment where there were a number of teams working in close proximity. It's a bit like a little bit like a, a hacker space in some ways, but with that intent of com of commercialising. There were startups, different startups, working in adjacent rooms with glass walls, and they could literally look through and see what each other is doing. But they're all focused on their own projects. So it was a bit of a melting pot. It was interesting that there is this cross pollination of ideas between companies within the Hacks program. But Hacks itself is working to protect those companies and their IP. It's in their interest, obviously, for these companies to be successful, and they want to make sure they get to market and go big. I feel I'm part of the action. Like sometimes you know you go to a place and you feel like this is the place where things are happening. That's what I love about being here. 
it's the chance to kind of see lots of super interesting teams doing really relevant projects which could change the world. If you live, work in the fashion world, you go to, I don't know, Milan or Paris, and you have that feeling. If you go, if you work in media, you go to New York, you go to Los Angeles, you feel that's the place. And for like tech innovation with hardware, this is definitely like that. We get a lot of teams that do some sort of like control systems theory and those sort of things. And I help them with those as well as fundamental parts. And obviously some people are very skilled in some areas, but not necessarily so much in others. Basically what they have is officers with their staff who have got contacts and experience. Occasionally it's people who have uh, had their own startup then, uh, and have gone through hacks and end up working for hacks. Coming from Brisbane, I originally had a startup of my own and we began manufacturing in, in Brisbane. Turns out it was a bad idea for a few different reasons. Lost a lot of time, a lot of money, and then all of the components that we were ordering stands off the shelf were like 80% coming from Shenzhen. When I originally came here, I sort of spent like four months kind of just understanding what the heck we were doing. So there's a experienced local and overseas people who can help you your startup. Hacks, the holidays you come in, the guys set you up with like bank accounts, we have people to help you translate, like a whole online community of people that tell you where you can eat if you're vegetarian. But then beyond that, we also have a team of about 25 full-time staff that can help you anywhere with electronics engineering, mechanical engineering, we've got sourcing agents, we've got graphic design artists, we've got people that help you with business mentorship, a whole broad range of stuff. My name is Rolo, sounds like a Rolo, but I'm never wrong, so there's no W. Just joking. My job is a graphic designer for Hex. I can help you do all the graphic design if you join Hex. My name is Noel Joyce. I'm head of design at Hex. I'm Chiu, the Hex mom. Pretty much like a, a Chinese mom for all the startups. Help them to survive in China. Most of them come here like the first time and have a lot of things need to be solved. <laughs> Generally, if you're someone that is very particularly, uh, very experienced, very intelligent, very good at doing one particular thing and you want to make a business, we are going to help you with all the other aspects in terms of taking your product into reality. Yeah, I like uh, all the creativity things, like to help people build their logo, how to show the product on a graphic. And they've got, I guess, social areas, so sort of kitchen and a bit of a, there's a table tennis table, of course, and a bit of a rooftop area, it's really nice. Then you go down into the building a bit more and they've got this reasonably well kitted out hacker or maker space. So there's all, all the tools there. I think there's even like pick and place. What they provide is, it's a little bit like a hacker space. They've got a workshop full of every piece of equipment you'd ever want to use to build a product. They've got co-working spaces. They've got people who can show you how to use machines. And in many cases, uh, you know, people were making low volume production of their first prototype runs in space within Hacks. Not only have they got all the machines that you could possibly need to make prototypes, but a lot of their most machines are just mini versions of what you'd see on the production line. So they've got mini pick and place machines, they've got CNC machines that are micro versions, which means that you can not only prototype your product, but you can prototype your manufacturing. It's almost like walking into a working R&D laboratory with all the resources available. And that kind of saves and shaves down a lot of time in, in, in taking a hardware product to market because, you know, it's, it's really well understood that hardware products are they're hard. It's, it's hard to get things to market when, when you've got something that's physical. If you've got an idea for a project or a product and you want to bring it to market, you don't need to fit out your own R&D facilities in whatever city you live in. Basically, you take your tech team, go to Shenzhen for a little while, work at Hacks, and you have all of the tools and facilities available to you. Meet new people every day and it's not like just a normal new people. All kinds of crazy people have the excellent ideas. So every day is very exciting. People who come here, they all have very high IQ and are very interesting. <laughs> so we are quite selective now and we, I think at the moment we generally get about a thousand applications every year. And we get to help those we find most promising to actually come true. And we take out of those at the moment 50 if you also include local Chinese teams. If you're only including um, international teams, it's somewhere in the order of 30. I think it's a little bit like being in uh, the lab of the future. Uh, I had a similar impression going to MIT when you see their labs and you see the projects and it's all like crazy things. But generally MIT stuff stays in the lab. I think what Hacks is interesting, where well, it's really interesting to be at Hacks, we have those projects get out of the lab and into the world. Generally it's just if you guys have really good business idea, if you have a really great team, have the confidence you guys are going to move forward and make a really great company, then you're with a good chance. <laughs> and because it's located within this Waichung Bay electronics ecosystem, Hacks provides access to a whole lot of technology resources. So if you have an idea for a company, say you're an IoT startup or you want to come up with a new product, what you can do is go along and participate in a hacks program where they will put you in contact with people that will help you with design of your product, taking it all the way through to manufacturing. There's no platform like it that can help a founder 
go from literally just a, an idea in their mind with a working prototype they've hacked together to in three and a half months a fully resolved launchable device which they can then put out into the world and get real customers and then start everything they need to do in order to get that product to market. It's absolutely fascinating to watch and the speed is so exciting and exhilarating. It's like being on a roller coaster 24-7, more exciting than anything I can possibly imagine. In fact, it's very strange going back home or finishing at the end of the program if you realize just how slow the rest of the world works outside of hacks. We can do the another accelerator in the universe, like <laughs> in the moon or the Mars. Yeah. Hacks is a kind of different because we're really flexible. A lot of things we do just to abandon all the rules we think outside the box and we get it done. The other benefit to ha Hacks is they've been very strategic in their location. So we're in Shenzhen, which some people call it Silicon Valley of China. So it's in the south of China, just north of Hong Kong. And it's a really cool place because in the last 25 years, the Chinese government has essentially just decided that they're going to make it a mecca for electronics. And so they've poured billions of dollars into developing it up. So I went from about 20 5,000 people to now like 25 million people in about 25 years. So if you're working on any kind of a technology product that puts them in a fantastic location, it means that you can take your team there and work on your product development and you couldn't be any closer to the action. Everything you need is at your doorstep. It's just, it's a place where you're very nearby to a lot of manufacturing centers. And in particular where we are right now is the Hua Chang Bay Electronics Markets. So it's a place where you can find a whole range of electronics components, parts, everything like that, literally downstairs, which is really useful for us. Almost everywhere we went in Shenzhen, we hopped in a bus for an hour. Hacks was different, right next to our hotel, above the electronics market, floor after floor of stands with components. And on the very top, Hacks have taken out most of the top floor. So right now we're on the eighth floor and the first two fourth floor of this building are all electronics components. It's like switches, connectors, fuses. Hacks is located in the HQ Mart building right above the electronics markets in Waichang Bay. Yeah, the first time I came here was it was a daunting experience, <laughs> in a good way. Literally in the elevator downstairs is everything you need to make whatever you're making, which is, I mean, that's a benefit you really can't level. If you are interested in coming into the program, make sure that you've gone to the stage where you've actually started building something that proves your, your concept. The first thing that we always generally look for is functional prototype. Next thing is you need to have a really good team. So in particular, if you're going for a product that is really relying heavily on, say, like AI control or some sort of particular thing, you need to have someone on your team that can deal with those problems that are very unique to your particular problem. Beyond that, you need to make sure that you have a really good market that you're going into. So if you come in sort of like marketing a sweater for ferrets or something like that, we know that there's not going to be that many ferrets you can sell to. You really like go into some sort of emerging space. A lot of the teams that we have are moving into sort of like industrial robotics. I mean, a lot of them are moving into like medical spaces that are just opening up with new technologies and things like that. And then the last kind of thing is just, I mean, we get a lot of applications from people that are sort of like very casually into their company. So generally we go for people that really are dedicated and really sort of passionate about what they're doing so that we know they're going to be able to Put it, push it through to the end because anyone that's done a startup knows that it's going to be hard times. You got to get a breakthrough. The hex portrays itself as essentially a, an outsourced R and D department, but at their core, it's a VC business. So we invest money in the teams. In exchange, we give them help, we give them space, we give them a whole bunch of sort of like access to mentorship and things like that. Hacks will take a certain percentage of your company in exchange for being able to be in their accelerator program. So most of the startups are pre-revenue. What we do is we, we find really good teams. We invest a certain amount of money in them and we bring them um, through the whole program. And the whole idea is they take that cash and they use it during the program, sometimes after the program, to develop their product. What we take in return is equity in the company. What they are wanting to do is invest in companies that are going to be successful. We essentially just take a certain amount and you know, once you guys go to IPO, start making a whole bunch of money, we make some of that back as well. So it's good in the sense that we are part of your team as soon as we do it. So as soon as um, we, we take some of your equity, we're literally invested in, in your product. So it means that we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you know, get to that end stage. So the usual arrangement is that you have an idea for a product or a company, go along to Hacks and participate in one of their programs. Typically, in exchange for all of the services and facilities they provide, they will take an equity position in the company. As part of that, following on from product development, they will introduce you to people who might assist with funding so you can do capital raising and then take the product that you've developed within the Hacks environment to market. We're a global accelerator, but the way in which we use the resources here will change. There will be a shift from making and manufacturing to research and development, and then ultimately sales, because this will be a huge market to sell in as well. As the barriers for, for, for that to happen, such as kind of 
mass manufacturing becoming a lot more localized and becoming something you can do in your bedroom. So the kind of landscape changes for hacks and it will become more and more democratized. I'd like to see hacks playing a part in that role, helping manufacturing to become a lot more easy and more accessible to, um, to anyone with an idea for a product.